All right. Hello, home service pros. Welcome to the Battle Plan Marketing Podcast, episode number 121. Today, we've got a special guest on the show, Mr. Bob Muller of Personal Plumbing, Inc., a veteran-owned, family-run plumbing business out of Oceanside, California, San Diego County, providing services to the local community for over 20 years. I think he's founded in about 2000, but he'll correct me if I'm wrong. Got about 600 reviews on Google, 4.9 star rating, 100 more on Yelp, 4.5, another 100 on Facebook, 4.9. He's absolutely crushing it out there. Quality first, obviously. Welcome to the Battle Plan Marketing Podcast for Contractors. Get actionable advice and tactics on how to grow your home service company. Plus interviews with industry experts dropping value bombs in marketing, sales, and operations. And now let's power up your home service biz with your host, Mark Ambrose of Battle Plan Marketing. Welcome to the podcast, Bob. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. I uh, enjoy the lead in there. Yeah, we've been in the Oceanside area specifically for about the last 10 years. I've been actually in the industry for over 30 years, been running, doing uh, doing my thing now for a while, still getting this whole uh, plumbing thing figured out. But in terms of specifically what our discussion is going to be today on is marketing, that's the thing you got to get right. So, you know, we're... <laughs> We're heavily focused and heavily learning and, and investing our time and energy into learning this specifically. I see that. I see, uh, we'll get into that in a sec. I see you're heavily involved in social, taking advantage of the channels that are available to you. So smart man there. So before we get into that, though, tell us what you guys do, where you do it, who you do it for, commercial, residential, so on and so forth. Yeah. So I started plumbing back in the early 1990s, specifically more around 89, 1990s, kind of when I got into it, got out of the military about that time. And I started my quest as to just learning the, the skill of being a plumber, which led into other skills, right? So you kind of got to get to know what you're actually doing it for. And of course, for me, it was more about building a family and understanding that in order to build an income out of this, you got to really get invested into your career and make it a career. And that's kind of what I did, Led learn more about uh, the plumbing side of the service plumbing side of it, knowing that service plumbing is is kind of what you the, the skill you really got to learn in order to keep yourself valuable to the community and to your skill set long term. A lot of guys that get into like the commercial plumbing as well as the union side of plumbing as well as the home building side of plumbing really kind of limits your skill set and limits your your chances of really making this a long term career. Yeah. So for me, it. I learned kind of early that I needed to learn service plumbing. Yeah, I agree. 100% for those out there who are listening, maybe booming, you know, maybe you had a boom in the new construction or commercial, but those two things are super cyclical, right? And recession times or downturn times, it's going to be hard to put food on the plate maybe. So, Well, I can tell you this is the time of year when your inbox is filled with applicants from the construction side of the industry. Uh -huh. So it's you're you're right about the cyclical side about it about every single recession we get into is when you know we inbox gets flooded with those type of applications and you know it's not that you don't want to help your fellow community out and and your people out but for me if i could give anybody some good advice or investment advice it would just be invest in your knowledge you know get yourself well rounded don't put yourself in a corner yeah super that's interesting so you get i didn't even realize that you get a little bit of a leading indicator on a coming downturn by construction halting, and now those guys coming to you for jobs. Yeah. That's super interesting. Okay, so let's talk about, well, let's go back to plumbing. Do you specialize in any particular service? Is there one or two that you really love to get? Or Yeah, so honestly, the way that I've kind of had to, to take this, the direction of my company specifically, is just getting to know what I can actually teach, train, and retain employees, of course, in terms of my own skill set, you know, I got a strong skill set in understanding all phases of plumbing from commercial to to residential to new construction to it all, but you can't teach it all, right? right. You know, and you can't uh, and you can't invest in it all. And so you got to really get to know what we're, you know, where the market, what you're good at. And for me specifically, that became about 10 different services that we provide within our company that I know that I can put the processes together, that I can train to anybody to come in my company and do it. And that people can perform those services for the high need services for the type of clients that we're trying to service. So here specifically, we're trying to service, you know, customers that need service plumbing today. And so for me, that I know that means I need to have 
guys that know how to fix things, troubleshoot things, take care of drains, emergency type services, leaks, your basic stuff that people, you know, in today's busy world where people are trying to find you online and where people need you today, you got to be able to provide those high level of services. So for me, I understood that that's about 10 different services that we do specifically type water heaters, leak detection, repipes, reroutes. Here in Southern California, we get a lot of really bad water leading to a lot of other problems in our houses, which is water filtration. So just knowing that that these are the high needs that the, that our market has over here, I'm trying to cater to that type of client and that I can get to them today. And so that means that I need to be able to have a decent amount of staff that can perform the services and that we have to be highly visible on our online services in order to attract the people that need our services. So that's kind of what we did, understanding that that takes a brand that behind it. So we really have focused hard on building a brand here. We branded about four years ago to personal plumbing. And so that's kind of our niche and, and our tagline is, you know, I want to be your plumber. So that's also trademark. So that's the way we built it. Yeah, I saw that uh, your truck, you rebranded your trucks, you wrapped your trucks with the Uncle Sam, and I want to be your plumber, or something like that. I, I liked it a lot. The, the color, the red, white, and blue, it all looked really good. So hats off to you. So you went from Bob Moeller plumbing to personal plumbing to brand it. Well, so, so yeah, but when I moved here 10 years ago to Southern California from the uh, Northwest up in Oregon, you know, I was a different plumbing company up there. And of course, when I moved down here, I just had to get my thing rolling, which was just my last name, which, you know, a lot of people have to do when they first go into a new market that they don't have a name recognition or a brand. You, you just throw your name on the right. truck and that's how your brand starts to get built is by your name. And and I understood that if I if I if I ever want to make this thing not about just Bob Mueller, I'm gonna to have to figure out a way to brand it. And there's not too many corporate companies out there that have their name on the business. I'm sure that, you know, McDonald's isn't right. <laughs> is the last name McDonald's, right? right. So right. You got to have a brand behind it. So I kind of, I knew that here in a veteran area of, of Oceanside, we're, you know, a very military minded community over here. Yeah. I knew that we could really target and market to that with the, with our Uncle Sam brand, as well as my plumber Sam is my, is my mascot and my tagline that I just want to be your plumber. Just like, you know, everybody has their personal accountant, their personal dentist or lawyer, or whatever they might have that's personal to them that they trust. I want to be your personal plumber. Nice. So that's kind of why I came up with personal plumbing and, really? and I want to be your plumber. I like it a lot. I like how you analyze the local community too. You know, is a military base there in Oceanside or, or just up the road? Is there one in Oceanside? Yeah, there is, right? And Pendleton. Yeah, so Camp Pendleton is right here. It's a very big community of Marines over here. We're not far away from uh, San Diego where it's all it's all navy and marines over there and, and air force right. so we got a we got a very very big strong military community over here and and it really pays to get to know who you're trying to service and that's you know we know that we're serving that community and and they appreciate that we're veteran owned and and that we're you know we're honest plumber that wants to go out there and provide the type of services that we provide and and we let people know what services we're doing and and for how much we're doing them for and that's important yeah yeah good Really good insight, good good analysis of your local market, knowing who your customer is. Really smart. I like yeah. that a lot. What would you say is one of the biggest challenges to your business over the years? So obviously there's several. So one of one of which is obviously getting to know what your price points are, right? So getting to know how much to charge for your services is is the first biggest challenge that every single business owner goes through because that just gets back to understanding your numbers and knowing your numbers and your KPIs and stuff like that. And if you're not, you know, investing into in the technology that's tracking your numbers and, and understanding what your what services that you're actually selling and how much those services are actually costing you, that's going to be the biggest challenge in everybody's company. So if you don't get that right, you're you're a not going to grow. You know, b you're you're not servicing your customer well. It's just like if you get used to buying a water heater for me for X amount, but now I got to raise it by 50% because I got it wrong, right. you're not going to be able to get all of your customers on board right. to your new price point. So you got to really get to know your prices and you got to get to know those early, whether you're a small company or whether you're a large company, you've got to set your prices based off of where you want to go, not where you are. 100%. I couldn't agree more. You know, that is job number one. What was that process like for you, Bob? Was that A lot of pain. <laughs> A lot of slow growth, right. 
a lot of uh, just getting to like when you first start your plumbing company out, you usually base it off of what your guy that you were working for <laughs> sold his stuff for and actually sell it for less because you're starting out. Right. You're not, that's, that's what everybody you're does. Not growing. Yeah. So you're just going out there and trying to undercut the market to get your customers and try to provide a good service and then build from there. But once you set your prices, your prices are set. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying to grow your company with that price point, you can grow very quickly with the smallest prices in town, but you're not going to grow effectively. Right. <laughs> you're never going to make enough money to grow your company correctly. And that was my biggest struggle for many years. I'll say it's probably been over a 20 year struggle and until for the last, you know, maybe five years, I finally got this thing figured out on getting my, my prices right. Probably the biggest struggle. The second one would be, you know, just employee, the right hiring process, mm -hmm. knowing when to, knowing when, how to hire and knowing how to fire. You know, those are, those are two big struggles in a plumbing company and just having a good retaining process. Yeah. And they're ongoing struggles. Prices change all the yeah. time. Your supplies, and especially the last couple of years, right? With the pandemic, yeah. the prices went crazy. And so you had to adjust or be in trouble. And employees yeah. is always a problem, right? Hiring the right people, keeping them, retaining them, yeah. not an easy thing. And that's, for me, you know, I've learned that it's best for me to build my own plumbers. So we've kind of gone through the process now of, of ha we have our own in-house training program where I'm bringing on kids that have a really good attitude because I can train on attitude and I can train on, you know, on desire. And, you know, for kids that, that see a, an opportunity and you train them when they don't have a lot of opportunity and show them opportunity, advancement, and a new career point to where you can teach these 10 services that I provide, which I call my stock in my company. Every single one of my services I provide are my stocks in my company. Nice. And I invest in those stocks that I know are doing well, just like the stock market. You're not going to invest in you know stocks that are not doing well in your portfolio. You got to know what your stocks are in your company as well. And, and for me, those are the those are the 10 services I provide. We invest heavily into those and, and invest heavily into the training on those. And when you get those things right, you can service your customer and you can train guys really quickly to perform those services. Yeah. So you can't teach a guy to be a plumber in six months, right? But you can teach a guy to perform services right. pretty quickly. Right. I love it. You know, most of the, almost exclusively, I would say, all of the successful companies I've talked to, the owners, managers, marketing guys, have that same philosophy of hiring. Like, I don't want to hire an existing plumber because I've got, he's got his bad baggage or whatever, or poor training. So bringing people on and create, you know, like you say, take somebody who is just starting out, needs opportunity. You give them the training. I saw on your Facebook page a lot of your or several of your training sessions that you post on there. I love that you do that. That's brilliant. Yeah, we do a lot of that. We have we hire it in three different. We we have a six level training program where you you come into my company. I don't care if you've been plumbing for two years. You're a level one plumber in my company. You start at level one. You get to go through level six. You can prove your way from level one to level three quickly if you think you've got the skill set. Right. But we train based off of a training process, testing, and they go through you know the training program. So you get yourself through the level one through six, and then there's opportunities beyond that. So we you know we have an org chart, and, and of course every company has to have the proper you know org chart. And if you don't have one, you really need to have one. Yep, org chart and operating procedures, standard procedures. Yes, which you obviously have. You don't get a four point nine rating from six hundred people unless you know what you're doing. Yeah. And boy, to take you back to that, you know, it's so funny The in today's world, you don't get hired unless you have that, right? You got to have right. that ability to be seen on all social sites. And, and of course, we still have that Yelp platform that is, it's, it's a need out there, but I can tell you, we probably have five or 600 Yelp reviews, you but you know, of course, you really only have about 100 that are ever going to stick with Yelp. And that's the problem with Yelp, right? Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's a struggle we have as business owners that do marketing with Yelp. And, and of course, we have that love-hate relationship with them. But they're a need in the, comp in the market. You just got to play the games yep. with these companies. You got to know how to, how to use their services. And you just got to use them as a tool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Yelp, uh, for, for those out there listening, if your consumer has not, is not an active Yelp user, has not put reviews on Yelp previously, then I would not encourage them to do so. First of all, it's against... Yelp's policy to ask for reviews, which is ridiculous. 
But yeah, if they if they're not an active user, they'll just bury that thing. And sometimes even if they yeah, are, they are. If they don't give the right kind of review that Yelp wants to hear from yeah. it. I mean, the the Yelp algorithm is is like the I don't know how you guys that do this for a living, you know, that try to help people with the reviews, even try to challenge yourself to get people to a good rating on Yelp. But it's a strategic plan that you really got to you really got to understand if that's going to be the approach you want to use for me. I'm a Google guy. I'll invest. I mean, I invest money into Yelp, but I can tell you that for me, you get such a better return on investment going to strictly where the money is. And that's Google. Yeah. Yeah. Eight out of 10 people are going to Google and pulling it up, plumber near me. And that's the end of the story. Yeah. They'll, they'll analyze, of course, they might go to your Yelp, you know, to check you out, your reviews, but Here's my customer, though. I can tell you that like your Yelp customer, at least I, I know Choppers. that Yelp, it's, it's really more of like more whatever market you're in like if you're in the if you're at back east i don't even think yelp even really exists back east you know and, and like midwest it's there's you know a small little portion of it but here in you know the specifically the west coast i mean it's a big platform over here yeah. in on the west coast and you know it's used by a lot of people but it's used by a different market a different clientele and for me, my my clientele is is not trying to, you know, I, I know that people that if they want to go find a good restaurant, they're going to use Yelp. That's all I'm looking for. Yeah. If you're if you're trying to find, you know, the best plumber out there, most people are going to Google. 100 percent. And if you have 600 or 200 or 150 or whatever, if you if you load up your reviews on Google, they're not going to go to Yelp, right? Yeah. And somebody says plumber near me, Oceanside, and up you come with your, I'm sorry, I can't see the number in my screen, but like six, 700 reviews, 4.9 yeah. rating. I'm done. I'm not going to, I don't need to go research and see what your reviews are on Yelp. You didn't get 600 fake reviews on Google. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, realistically, if we would have been paying attention to that earlier, we'd probably be over 2,000. And here's the thing, if you guys aren't getting started on this early and, and you're not gaining your momentum now, momentum starts the day that you start to do it, right? right. So if you don't start momentum now, you're going to be so far behind on the people that are using the technology the right way because you can be day one plumber, start your online presence today and look better than a guy that's been doing it for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. That, that's the problem we have with this platform that we have, which is the online presence, yep. which for me... I've been really trying to focus on building a better storefront because people don't shop at your business, right? They don't go through my storefront. I'm bringing my my company to them right. with my plan based off of my how they see me online. And so they don't know if I'm coming there as a, you know, we'll use a, an analogy of a restaurant business, right? So you as a restaurant customer know what type of money you're going to be spending when you go to a Denny's or if you go to a Ruth's Chris, right? Because you know what storefront you're going right. through. Well, you can have the same same storefront when a company's coming to you with their plumbing van. Good point. Okay? So you don't know what kind of plumbing company you're you're spending your money with. So another struggle with companies like myself that provide a lot of services and a lot of warranties, a lot of guarantees, you don't know if I'm a Ruth Chris or if I'm a Denny's right. when I'm coming to your door. Right. So once I build established relationship with you, now you want to do business with me because you know I'm a Ruth Chris. You know that I'm coming back with the services, my training. I've got the greatest chefs. I've got the greatest technology. Right. I've got all their stuff. So my price points are going to be different. So the biggest struggle that company owners have with the online presence is that we don't, we're not coming from you with a storefront. Right. Okay. And you're not my customer that's walking through my door. So I got to learn how to make sure that when you see me online, that you know that my services that I'm providing are not Denny's services right. and don't me for the $69 drain cleaning service. I, I don't do $69 drains. Right. Nice. That's a different company, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yes. And so I don't want to spend my advertising dollars attracting people that expect to pay $79 for my services. Really? So yep. there's a, you really need to know how to, to target your audience, how to to make sure that people understand that you're not, if you're one truck chuck out there and, you, and you're just trying to get all, all kinds of services performed out there, you're not trying to attract a certain customer. You know, you're just trying to attract all customers. Right. For me, I'm trying to attract my customers for, to my stock portfolio that I've built 
and I want them to invest into those into those services. I love it. I love. It. So, are you using some sort of software platform to to generate reviews? Yeah. So we use a company called Nice Job, and they are and they do a nice job. So I mean, basically, what it is, they automatically put all my reviews to all my social sites automatically. They It goes right to my website. It goes right to all my platforms that I use. So as soon as I get a review from a customer, it automatically gets posted to that stuff as well as my, nice. my websites. Nice. I like stuff that. Stuff like that. So, is, is it triggered by the invoice then, Bob? Or, or? It's automatic, yeah. yep. So as soon as my invoice is delivered to them, it asks them for a review and it gives them three different links to choose from. So if you're a Google customer, um, it'll automatically leave a review on Google because you're already already a Google customer, but you can choose Yelp and you can put your your review to Yelp or straight to our website. So there's a lot of different ways to get it on there. And then we, of course, we have a follow-up system as well, a drip campaign that makes sure that we get review. Yeah. Well, it's doing a good job. So hats off to them and you for instituting it. How about the like software CRM? Are you using a CRM software? Yeah, yeah, we do. We use uh, House Call Pro. We've been probably with them for about, I want to say about six years now. We've been with House Call Pro. They're a good company. They're a local company out of, out of San Diego, actually. Yeah. So, I mean, they're a national company, but they're out of here, out of San Diego. So that kind of attracted me to them. We were small when we when we started using them and they did every service that we really needed. We definitely got to a point where we could use more services than than they provide, but you know, they're still doing a pretty good job of keeping up with with what we need. So we're, right now we're happy with it. We have some integrated software that goes with them. We use a, a software called Chirp, which is our, our software that we use that integrates with it for our drip campaigns. A lot of different ways that we can target our audience with different drips yeah. that automatically trigger for people that like if we do a water heater install, it tags that customer to hit them on certain campaigns for when they're going to need a water heater flush, the services that we provide for that water heater. It's going to retarget them about every three months, you know, for different services that they're going to need for that water heater. I love it. Just to retarget our our customers, because if you're not retargeting what you already have, boy, you're missing a big amount of your, of the hard work that you put into it to acquire a customer because people don't, I don't know if, if they know their KPIs of how much it really costs to acquire a customer, but it's astronomical. Yeah, yeah. And very few people. So that's awesome. I love how you're using. Is that an email and what SMS text integration platform? It is an SMS text type stuff. It does email, it does, but basically what it is, it's another CRM that just integrates with this CRM. I see. And you can build you can build a ton of different campaigns out of it. You can ask it to do email marketing and you can ask it to just drip customers from tags that you build Beautiful. within your CRM. It stays in touch with all my clients for my house call pro does it as well, but you can turn that service off and just do it through chirp and it'll let people know that you're on your way. It'll let people know when the job is finished. It'll let people know it can just do a lot more than what my CRM can do. Right. So I just let it do all the, all the back end work for me kind of replaces a lot of the, what I need for a human to do. So it's more on the sales. Yeah. So for me, go ahead. Sorry. So it's more of a sales and marketing automations as opposed to uh, job yeah. job automations and stuff. Yeah, it, it that too. But for it does help for job automation because for me, I use it for like uh, we do videos. So like if a customer hires us, we have a service call protocol that we do and we perform for all of our customers and that we send out a video, a pre-video to our customers before we show up so that they know what to expect when we're going to their house. Mm-hmm. They get that automatic video sent to them done through that through that automation that we do. So that video just kind of introduces them to our company and lets them know. So it makes it easier for our technician when he gets to the job, yeah. not to feel like, they, like they're being, like they're selling something. They're not selling anything. They're just performing services that is just part of our protocol. And the customer gets to know that before our technician gets there. That's beautiful. I love that. So a little intro, are you on video there introducing yourself in the company or? I try to stay out of the videos. I try to make my, Sam is the guy that does a lot of my speaking for me. My plumber, Sam okay. is my voice. And so I, I really want plumber Sam to be my voice. I use my podcast for my local authority. So if people want to get to know who I am or get to understand the guy behind the business of personal plumbing, then they get like specific things on, you know, like insight on taking care of your water heater or just basic 
fix it type stuff that we do that we do on our podcast that we that we put out there. Brilliant. But for anything that I want to build for brand, I'm, I, I don't want me to be the brand. I want my logo to be the brand. I want my mascot, basically. Yeah, that's great. A lot of owners don't want, I don't like being on video. That's why we're doing a podcast. It's a, we're only going to publish the audio. I don't want my mug out there. <laughs> Right. So some of us are like that. We're camera shot. In fact, you can go back to the missus was laughing like junior high school yearbook, Mark Ambrose, camera shot, high school yearbook, yeah. Mark Ambrose, camera shot. Yeah, I don't want to be on. I don't want to be on. It. But maybe yeah. somebody in your company does. And and if that's a key employee, you think will go grow with the company for for years, decades to come. Then smart idea. And I really love the introduction video. What does that go out by text or email or? Oh, it's out automatically by text. Yeah. So that's SMS. And so, well, it also, I guess it goes out by email too. So because if, if we have an email associated to the account, it'll go by both. Beautiful. So it targets both in that way because it does a lot of follow-up for us as well. So after we've done our service call protocol and we're done with, it, with that and we're asking for the review, we're also going to let them know that, hey, here's, here's the other services. It gives them the drip campaign for the other services that they really need to get to understand, which is our our membership programs that we offer, as well as, you know, the what we specifically call our personal plan. Everything is, you know, done related to the company name, our personal, our personal touch drain services Got that it. we offer, personal plan that we offer. You know, we, we offer our personal protection plan as well, which is kind of a system that we want people to know that we can protect their, their drinking water as well as their home from being flooded from leak. Leak detection here is a big problem yeah. in Southern California. Yeah. And so we offer a service that we put a, a leak detection device in their, in your home where it will detect leaks and it will pick them up and automatically shut your water off. You can do that. You can, you can be in control of it or you can let the device be in control of it. You, you can turn your water on and off by your smartphone anywhere in the, in, in the United States. It's all Wi-Fi connected, lets you know the temperature of your water, lets you know your water use. It lets you know all these different really cool things, the technology that we're working with today. And it's part of a service that we provide. And, you know, that's also one of the stocks in our company. So that's, you know, one of those things that we really focus on. I love that. Is that the Moen Flow system? Yeah. That... Yep. We use the Flow by Moen. And we, you know, got registered with, with Moen as, a, as an authorized an installer, get our self-protection of the warranties and stuff that go along with Moen. Um, and then, of course, that also leads into the training that we can give our technicians, you know, from Moen and make sure that they're all certified and doing all the types of stuff that we do. That's brilliant stuff. Bob, do you work like, a, so So let's take leak detection, right? Uh, do you get into the mitigation part of that at all? So we don't do any of the cleanup. We do that. We're, we're always going to be the first guy on the scene. So we're usually going to be the company that comes in. We're going to find the leak. We're going to get the leak detected. As soon as we know that you're going to need some sort of mitigation services, we work with several companies that offer that. We don't try to get in the middle of it. We let the companies that that's what they do best get in the middle of it. There are plumbing companies out there that kind of do dual purpose mitigation and restoration as well as the plumbing aspect of it. But I know my lane and my lane is just uh, sticking to the plumbing side of it. Yeah. You already and, got 10 stocks. So yeah. why at 11th? Yeah. That's uh, yeah. We do recommend to some plumbers out there, take a look at, you know, getting IICRC certified and, and just doing the mitigation, maybe perhaps, you know, if it fits your wheelhouse and stuff, insurance will pay for all of that pretty much usually if it wasn't neglected. And there's some nice coin to be made there, you know, make as much or more than a reroute even, you know? No, for sure. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I, It's definitely one of those things that, you know, you definitely can add that to your company. You can definitely use that as a service that you can provide in the company, but you have to, you also have to make sure that you've got guys that can do that skill yeah. set, that you can do the training, that you can provide that service at a high level for right. your customers. It's not just you add to your to your right. wheelhouse. There's a lot that goes behind the back end of it. There is. That that you're really going to have to get yourself invested into, and it's not a small investment. So No, there's a lot of equipment. You got dehumidifiers, dryers, blowers, all that stuff. Seal off the room. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's no small task. Yeah. But there is a profit that there is a profit center there for some people who want to specialize in the restoration I wouldn't touch. Where I was going with the whole thing was I wonder, so of course if you go out for leak detection and cap the leak reroute. That's a probably an easy customer to say, <laughs> you don't want to go through this again. Imagine if you weren't home 
and it was upstairs and it destroyed your house. So the mowing flow was where I was getting to was yeah. these become easy sales. So I was, you gave me an idea to like, I wonder if work with restoration companies after the fact, so maybe they didn't get that client from you, they got it from somebody else, but you work some kind of deal where they give you the lead and you go back in with the mow and flow and protect these people against future devastating, potentially devastating damages. And actually we, we build relationships with several of those type of companies. And I can tell you, it, you know, most of the plumbers in our area, we get bombarded probably at least 10 emails a month from restoration companies that want to do business with you because you are the first guy on the scene and you're going to be, you know, offering restoration. So that, you know, the restoration companies want to be the ones that are recommended. So I build relationships with guys that I really, that I trust and that I know is going to do a good job for my client because ultimately they're my client first and I want to make sure that they're well taken care of. And then we got good relationships with a few companies that, that do that service for us. And and then they they do they do work with the with the insurance company because the flow by mowing does save you insurance money. So if like if you do and some insurance companies are actually requiring you to put those on now. So if you've had one, oh wow, yeah, in our area at least. So like uh, depending on what insurance company you're you're with, they're requiring it if you've had a claim. So they're they're oh, making wow. them on, and then other companies are giving you discounts for putting them on, so that uh, it could save your your house from some catastrophic damage inside there. You know, and, and I'm looking into some some other devices for sewage, you know, for some sewer alerts that will alert you when you're having a, a blockage in your in your drain. So oh. we're going to be tackling a few other different services coming up because we're really investing into our drain cleaning services that we're doing now. And I want to be able to to incorporate a different type, type of service into our, in, for our clients so that we can also help protect them from any type of catastrophic backups. That's awesome. I didn't even know they had devices out there. What, that you'll put down the pipe or somehow? Or who knows? I have to look it up. It's a leaktronic device. And basically what it is, is it connects to your sewer main clean out. And as you're having a backup, it's going to come up into your clean out before it goes into your house. And then oh. that, that alarm is going to go out. And you can connect it Wi-Fi and you can have it, you know, let you know that you should stop using water in your house right away and then call a plumber out. And that's one way of doing it. And there's another device out there that actually is a backwater valve that you can install. And what it does is as you're using water, the ball lifts up. If you're having a backup, that ball falls down and it blocks your sewer and nothing can back up into your house. And it's, it's a patented company out there that uses this stuff. I'm still familiarizing myself a little bit more with the product before I really start offering that service. But there are services out there, and I think using both in conjunction with themselves so that you can actually have one that has the alarm go off and one that actually stops the sewer for backing you up. And that's a really good service you can provide for your customer. Yeah. Is another way of just ensuring trust with your customer and that you're going to be the one coming back to do the drain cleaning. I love it. That's fantastic. So if you do a sewer repair or a reline or something, then obviously that's always coming up. That conversation's coming yeah. up. Yeah. Especially if you're needing a sewer relining service, which we provide now, you know that you've had a lot of sewer problems over there. Right. And once you have a liner in there, you really aren't going to be doing too many drain cleaning services in there that can damage that liner. So you really want to be able to protect your home from it backing up on you again by having this type of a device in there. I see. So, you know, I was talking to a trenchless company in the last episode. So, and my question was, when you pull that liner through and, you know, it it cures and all that good stuff, and we want to come back, I don't know, what, six months, a year later with a hydro jet, will that damage that liner in your opinion? Do you have any evidence to that? No evidence that, that depending on how aggressive of a hydro jetter that you're using, of course, you can get stuff in there that shoots better than 3,500 PSI, and that's going to go through just about anything. You see that stuff for steel. It's going to go through steel. It's going to go through your liner. Wow. That's crazy. For me, you know, we use, you know, our 1500 PSI type stuff that are designed to do spear type, you know, jetting. It's going to be more of a rotating head that's designed to wash, not to penetrate. So if you're using a penetrating head, then yeah, you can damage that liner. But if you know what kind of equipment you're putting inside there and you're doing your due diligence, understanding what you're putting in there to do the drain cleaning portion of it, it's not going to damage it. Yeah. Once again, back to training, skills, and knowledge. 
Yeah, 100%. Let me jump back to the pricing because that's such a big thing. And I forgot to ask you way back then, a little neuron just fired in the brain there, Bob. Yeah. So in House Call Pro, by the way, I, I interviewed the CMO of House Call Pro in the early teens of my episodes or so. So for those listeners can go back and listen. His name is escaping me right now. But yeah, it was a great conversation. Love House Call Pro. Do you use a price book then? So you guys are out in the field, they have a price for everything pretty much? Or? Yeah. I started with using a very expensive, when I take in from the time when we were doing everything by the hour, you know, when you're an hourly plumber and you're charging your $95 an hour, or your $125 an hour, or whatever your prices were, you learn quickly that you can't make money at being an hourly plumber, right? right. So I started out trying a company called Profit Rhino and, and they, you know, it was a, it was a company that was getting started back in the day. And I, I knew that I needed to go with this upfront pricing type stuff. And man, it was it was a lot to try to figure out just how to use this system. And I just didn't like the technology. So I knew that I could just build my own. So in, in House Call Pro, you can build your own. Nice. And because Profit Rhino integrates with House Call Pro, you can actually took the price book out of it, put it, integrated it into it. And once it was in QuickBooks, it's always there. You can take it out of QuickBooks and, and put it back into your system once you own it. And so that's the way I kind of did it. And then I just built it in my own. And so I, I have my own price book now that I can take and, and make my own and not have to, you know, use somebody else's system. I, I really like being able to, to build it to how I need it to, to operate and make it better for my users because nobody wants to try to have a price book. It's just like going to a restaurant that has a menu that's 95 pages thick. Right. You'll never know what you want to eat. And for me, I want a simplified, you know, price book that gives you three three options, simplified and makes it easy for both the for my user and my end user. Yeah, and more accurate, right? You've yeah. you've analyzed the heck out of it. So yeah. Yeah, a lot more control out of it. So yeah, we built our own. That's great, man. Hats off to you for doing that. Let's talk about the marketing. We'll finally get around a little marketing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the listeners there. So what the PPC ads, Facebook ads, direct mail, obviously I love how, so for the listeners out there, you know, as Bob said earlier, if you're not marketing to your existing customers, it costs you a fortune to acquire, you know, you should quit today yeah. <laughs> or start doing it. So that's job number one. So I love yeah. that you're doing the email, SMS, following up annual services, flushes, inspections, these kinds of things. So let's talk about on the cold market side. How do you bring it? How were you acquiring brand new customers? Yeah. So realistically, the only way you're ever going to really get new customers that don't know who you are, A, and it's going to go back to brand. Okay. Because if you don't have a brand to sell, you don't have anything to sell. So branding is the number one most important thing that you have to have. And if you have a silly looking old white van that has got 19,000 different services on it with a phone number that you can barely read, that's not branding, right? For me, we have fully wrapped van that just has our name on it and a, and a big phone number and just lets people know I want to be your plumber. And we don't have any services that we provide on it. It's very clean and simple look. I really like the, the playbook of Dan Antonelli out there that's got the book out. It's called Branded, Not Blanded, right? So it's the guys out there driving the white vans out there that uh, don't have a really good logo or a tagline or anything like that. Yep. You're not building anything if you're not building your brand. And yeah. so that's the number one most important thing that you got to do. And I, I've attracted more customers because of they see me on the road driving that van more than I get, you know, just customers calling and saying, you know, hey, I found you on Google or stuff like that. So that's that's been a big thing out there with a lot of vans out there driving with the same same look, same simplified look and very easy to spot. Beautiful. So wrap your vans out there, folks. Wrap your vans. And I'm telling you what, a billboard costs you, what, twenty, thirty thousand right. dollars a month right. to advertise on, and that's monthly. One van that's that's wrapped that costs you four thousand and five thousand dollars to wrap is there for a lifetime. And if you got twenty of them out there doing it, you've got twenty different billboards out there yeah. servicing people and, and that's the most important thing to do. You gotta wrap your van. And you got to have it and it's got to be smartly wrapped. And if you're not sure about that, I highly recommend that you read Dan Antonelli's book, Blanded, Branded, Not Blanded. I like it. Not Branded. Yeah. He's uh, he's the guru in that area. And I highly 
suggest that you you get him bored with what he does out there. Yeah, thanks. I wrote that down. So yeah, you, you know, you're uh, that's a good point. So you pay a fortune for a billboard, a static billboard, by the way, that just sits there and it requires people to drive by it, or your van, which is all over town, making however many stops a day, always in pretty much a residential or a commercial. Either way, it's in right. front of all the other neighbors yep. who are all potential customers, you know, as well. Yeah. Especially you, you're going by neighborhood, right? So you're wanting to be the Ruth Chris, right? So yeah. you're more than likely your vans are already in the neighborhoods of the people you want that, to attract. That's right. And then just providing those type of uh, services that you provide in there that, I mean, that, that, that goes back to the review. And then of course, in the review, it's equally important that you get that review as it is for that review to be responded correctly because in the response to your review is also going to go to all the same platforms that have your keywords in them, right? So if you are being reviewed in Google and you were just at Mrs. Jones' house and you just did a leak detection, you don't want to answer Mrs. Jones, well, thank you for using personal plumbing, which is, you know, you want personal plumbing's name to be in there, yeah. but you want your keywords to be in there too, that the services that you just provided, which is like leak detection, you want to put all those same keywords in the in your review because now you're building keyword recognition in Google's algorithm in the response to your review. So when people when people are looking for those reviews and Google's giving you that review platform, that's a keyword that's also going to go to that same algorithm. Yeah, one hundred percent. And I don't know if people have noticed out there, but so if you Google plumber near me and or let's make it more specific, leak detection right company near me. And here comes, you know, there's the plumbers and the Google Maps. You will probably see that they will bring up reviews. You'll see three or four reviews. You, they will bring up reviews and they will bold the words that pertain to your search. That's right. So, yeah, that's brilliant advice. And by the way, you know, chat GPT-3 is all the rage nowadays. Yeah. And man, I have seen so much stuff coming out of the funnel nowadays in the last couple of weeks. So I want to warn the listeners out there. I see a lot of automations where they'll hook up to your CRM, chat GPT-3, mm -hmm. to your CRM and automate your review responses, your replies. And man, do not do that. Yeah. Your replies should be personal, should be, and those, some of those review, the replies will come out, they're, they're crazy wording. So they did a leak detection and I say, thank you. I'm glad your water heater <laughs> worked well. It'll just pull words out of thin air. Like you didn't even mention it in the actual review. Yeah. That might get better in the future, but I would still recommend. Uh, I agree. You don't pull out a little device. Like if you and I are talking and I say, Bob, you know, you were awesome. Your company was great. I really appreciate you saved me a lot of headache. If you pull out a little device and hit play and it played a response to me, you know, I'd be offended unless you had some sort of tracheotomy or something, right? <laughs> but we're all, all willing to, you know, use these new fancy, shiny new tools. Be careful how you use these things, folks. No, I agree. But I can tell you that that chat GPT AI is the next awesome. thing. It's it's awesome technology. And, and realistically, you're limited by what your own brain can ask it, right? So like yes. the more intelligent question you can ask, the, the better use you can get out of that technology. And, and I can tell you that I don't know if I'm the right guy to be asking the right questions to it, but I can tell you that it's got some really cool stuff that I've already used with this thing. And, and it's sure streamlined a few things for me, but you're right. I wouldn't recommend it to answer your reviews. <laughs> yeah, don't don't use the, the two things I can think about is don't use it to communicate with your clients, your customers, right? Whether that's through reviews. Now people are starting to use it in web chat and try to make it, you know, if you have your top 10 FAQs and it'll answer those for you, that kind of thing. I would still be careful there. So I'd be careful in its communications. And then Google just last week, I think, maybe this week, issued another warning saying, yeah. do not use this for your blog posts and stuff. You know, you can use it for your blog posts. Do not generate 100% AI content and post it up on your website. Now, I, I belong to a couple of SEO and affiliate marketing groups, and, and I can see some guys who use 100% AI, and they just absolutely killed it for about three months. And then they dropped off the face of the earth. 
So Google yeah. will reward you initially, and then it'll discover you. And it might go for a year or two or three, you know. So if you're only in business for a short time, grab some cash and go, by all means, do whatever yeah. you want. But if you're in business for the long haul, be careful how you use it. We use it a lot. We use it for creating outlines, uh, mm -hmm. creating ideas, creating emails, you know, and then we do a lot of editing. But, you know, if you just have it spitting out articles, um, danger. Yeah, no, I agree. And Google has a big investment to protect. So it's like they don't want any of this stuff going into uh, their algorithm. And, and if they pick it up and right now, Google, I don't know how many customers out there you're servicing and, and helping with their marketing, but I can tell you that right now, Google is shutting guys down quicker than, than you can imagine. Like you're, I've talked to hundreds of, of guys out there that are, that are having this issue right now that can't get back on their, their maps listings or back on to their, their stuff just because of a silly practice that Google might pick up and, and flag you for. And it's, yep. it's prevalent right now. So, and I think a yeah. lot of it has to do with this chat GPT stuff. Yeah. And, and Google just getting better at trying to filter out S, you know, black hat, so-called black hat SEOs and just businesses that are cheating. You know, you got three listings in maps. You're using, you know, your name is, is not, you know, whatever, leak detection, city, state, you right. know, with, uh, they're burying keywords in the name of the company. Or again, you know, buying bad links, links from other websites to yours, boost your ranking power. Yeah. Especially if those links are local in your industry or belong to really big, powerful websites. So people buy lots of links, all of these things. You got to be really, really careful. You might go on for years. I had a client who, when we brought him on, he already had three Google Maps listings wow. in a local area. And it went on and I told him, man, you got you to gotta turn two of these off. And he's like, man, I'm, I'm killing it. Why would I do that? And fast forward about, I don't know, two and a half years later, oh boy, you know, yeah, Google we'll, just removed we'll him from the map. He, he vanished. And now we're about two years later and we just manage his just website hosting. So we don't do SEO or anything for him now. But two years later, after getting killed out of the maps, he's still not in there. So yeah. be careful how you, how you play with Google because it may work for quite a long time. Another thing I see is that to get the star rating in Google for your plumber, plumber near me, and you see the company down there, you see companies down there with stars, they are cheating. They are using product markup usually. Yeah. And Google, they're getting away with it, but one day they will just vanish probably. I agree. So be careful how you mess with Google. Yeah, you definitely want to be this in for the long haul. And realistically, I mean, you're not just doing it for yourself. You're doing it for, you know, the, the company, you know, you're, yeah. you gotta, you gotta look at the stock of your company as your employees and in, in the future um, acquisition of your company. If that's going to be your, you know, your play, your exit has to be a part of it. And, and, you know, you gotta, you gotta understand that, that there's a lot of companies out there. If you want to attract anybody, you better, you better be playing by the rules and you, you better have it right because you're not going to attract anybody that if they see that you're not doing it right. Yeah, 100%. Okay, let's get close to wrapping it up here, Bob. So yeah. I saw a video on, I think it was on actually your Google Maps, so, you know, in the pictures and, and videos in there, where you did talk about exit strategy, and you, yeah. should, you should think about that in the beginning, actually. So yeah. do you mind touching on that a little bit? Or? Oh, yeah, no. Right now, I mean, the home service industry is the, pretty much the hottest market out there for, you know, private equity. And private equity is highly attracted to it because they need to spend money. And right now, <laughs> nobody's investing that money in, into the tech world right now. This, they're getting crushed on the stock market. And right. there's guys out there right now that are selling a private equity for life-changing numbers that if you're not thinking about, you know, your own, you know, life-changing strategy, then, you know, you're, what are we turning wrenches for? What are we, what are we doing this for? You know, so. For me, you know, specifically, you know, I'm trying to build something that has that has an EBITDA behind it that can attract the right type of private equity company. So down the road, whether I stay as an operator or whether I just get myself completely out of it, I got to have a strategy. And so my strategy is to get attracted to somebody and just see where this takes me. I mean, whether it's three years, five years, 10 years, but right. you got to have that exit in plan from the beginning. and 
if you're just starting out, I mean, there's no, there's no better time than now than to build something quickly and exit out of it so that you can build your next big thing. Cause your payday is not monthly here in this business, right? Your payday is when you can actually sell something that's, that has a market attractability to it that wants to acquire. And if, if you're not on top of your business to where somebody wants your headache, you're not attracting anybody. You got to be able to be acquirable. Yeah, 100%. And that starts with, you know, your mailing list, like you're doing, you're soliciting, you know, staying connected to your existing customers, SOPs, price book. Like, can you take Bob Moeller out of the business and what happened? Will it still run? That's right? right. So if you can't take yourself out of your business and have it still operate, then you got to figure out how to get that going. So you need yeah. your procedure. Yeah, 100%. And that's why, you know, that's why I stick with a very limited stock market in my you know, stock portfolio in my company and just stick to what we do well. And that will make sure that we stay profitable. I like it. Okay. Last question, Bob. What's the one thing you wish you knew in the beginning that you know today? <laughs> I could tell you knowledge. And that's the, that's the biggest thing that we don't have, right? When we are young, we think we know it all. We think that we can do it by ourselves. We don't need anybody's help or guidance. I tell everybody, get a mentor. If you don't have mm -hmm. a mentor that can help you navigate through this difficult thing we call business, because there's the widgets that we're building, and then there's the business that we're running. And there, you got to separate both of them. And if you don't know how to run the business side of it, you got to have somebody that can help you do that because that's 100% where everything is built is on the back end of the business. Everything has to be treated like a business. And for me, I didn't learn that early enough. I can tell you that's been, that was my, obviously my biggest struggle was just knowledge. And now, and now for me, I put that as the number one thing that you got to have. And I, and I actually, have been in the process of writing a book on this for a while to help nice. guys that want to get to over a million dollars a year in in the in this business. I call it humble pie because being humble is the most important thing. Right. And and I just call it my my humble pie the recipes that you need to have, the 10 ingredients you need to have in order to run a successful business. And the number one is knowledge. I like and that's it. invest in your knowledge. I like it. So a cookbook, you're you're creating a cookbook for Running a plumbing business or maybe any service business. That's right. Any service business is what it's really going to be for, because if you can run a plumbing business, you can run any service business. And, and realistically, it's any business. Any, every business has to operate the same way with processes and procedures. And if you don't have those, then you've got to have it in every business, no matter what it is. I agree 100%. Bob, you're awesome. That was a lot of great nuggets in there. You have obviously expanded the knowledge put everything into play. I love all the branding, the, the way you even branded your services like that. Yeah. Beautiful. You got it all going on there, sir. So, so hats off to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, we're, we're still learning and we're still growing. We still got a long ways to go, but uh, we're getting there one day at a time. Well, that's, that's the attitude to have. I appreciate that. All right. I'll close out the show. Thank you again, Bob. Great information for the audience. Thanks to listeners for sharing your time and attention with us. If you like what you heard, please rate, review, subscribe to our podcast so you get notified of future episodes. Feel free to share this one on your social channels. Good luck out there and create a great day. Thanks for listening to the Battle Plan Marketing Podcast. To power up your home service business, for show notes, visit Battle Plan Marketing slash podcast. If you enjoyed our show, please share it on social. Until next time.